It's Bam. Kyle Meredith. I'm here at Bourbon and Beyond, Louisville, Kentucky, and once again talking with the man himself, Sting. Welcome back to town. Nice to be back to Bourbon and Beyond. I yeah. think I've been in Louisville in a while. I don't think Duh. you've been here. We've noticed. It's beautiful. We've just been waiting, sitting around, just <laughs> ah, you have circling it. the block, you as they say. <laughs> I think we were talking last time you were supposed to be here, just a huge flood uh, came in. So this That's time right. you get... There was a big storm. You get just this mind-numbing heat that's been uh, hanging around today. So <laughs> congratulations. It's one of the other back in the south. Um, it's good to have you here, though. Uh, looking here, you've, uh, you're doing this three-piece tour again, the 3.0 tour that you've been on for, I guess, most of this year Well, this we point. started in, in America uh, two nights ago in Detroit, mm -hmm. and no one asked for their money back yet. So I'm kind of confident that it's going well. Oh, we've been touring in Europe, and again, I think people are surprised to see three people up there, because, you know, I have many different configurations mm -hmm. of bands over the years, but I haven't gone back to a three-piece since the, the famous one. Since the famous one. And for me, surprise is everything. I want to surprise myself, I want to surprise the people coming to see us or listen to us. Surprise is the essence of music. I like that maybe, maybe there's a little bit of trolling that goes in there as well, like... Uh Oh, a three-piece? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a different one. <laughs> yeah. Just lean into that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. why not? 3.0. <laughs> but, like, what is, is there freedom in a trio? Because, because you're, without working with the big band like you would, like, you don't have as many options, right? Or well, I guess that's what it would seem you have, like. You have different options. You know, I, I think what's, what we love about it, the three of us, love the clarity of the sound between the instruments, all the air between the instruments, which creates a lot of freedom. Mm -hmm. um, it's not all clogged up with you know, not a sound, but it's it's loud and it's clear. And I think the audience responds to that. We have to work harder. There's no safety net. Mm -hmm. All of us, each, each of the trio has to work harder, but we enjoy it. You know? That's got to be fun, though. It's fantastic. Like, there could be there could be a disaster. Well, I guess there could be a disaster any time. Although you're quite the professional at this point, so maybe not. Yeah, I mean, I can either own up to a disaster or I, I can, you know, act my way out of it. But uh, we're, So you're replacing Neil at this one and Ohana and maybe some other ones, too. I had to ask, I was like, do you know Neil? Do you, do you get to call yeah, him and be like, hey, I'm, I'm doing your stuff? No, I, I don't know him that well. I've met him a few times and have a great love and respect for his music so yeah yeah if you wanted to you know just slip in cinnamon girl out there or something <laughs> just a <laughs> be a good moment castle's burning was my my favorite of his exactly. i used to sing that yeah. years ago oh there's plenty to choose from yeah yeah with him you do have a new single uh, i wrote your name on my heart and um i mean once again you've got this great rock song you're doing the the bo diddley beat now, does it come from that? Because, and the only reason I bring it up, because obviously it is, but but it's in the press release too. Like, it, it makes note of it. So when you're writing that song, it's like, do you, because I don't know if you've ever done, used that, that riff before, or that beat before. Probably not. Again, it's a surprise, you know. Yeah. I surprised myself. I think it really, it really telegraphs what the band is about. It's a very simple song. It's a love song. It's a romantic song, but it's noisy and very direct. So, yeah, I think that's what, what we are. I, um, I quote our last interview to artists every now and then because <laughs> I ask you once if songs like that were easy for you to write. But, and you said, yeah, basically. <laughs> 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 Not to say the song is simple, but it's just that you have figured out so many different styles. And when you're like, oh, I need to do the rock song. Yeah. Yeah. Is that still the case? Well, this song is m more complex than it sounds actually <laughs> okay <laughs> there are more chords in it than you would imagine um but it sounds simple uh -huh. and i think that that is the the trick really i want i want things to sound simple even if they're not but uh you know songwriting is never easy it's always hard yeah how often do you think of your songs as fluid because again the different iterations the bands and like Dylan's a good example, right? Like Dylan can write a song and know that there's going to be 10 different versions of that song. Mm. Like how much do you think of your songs when you're doing that? You know, I, I, I try and recreate a song every night. I'm always looking for some incremental change that I can make, and, and my musicians are the same. We're looking for tiny little harmonic changes or a bass line or, or, or some harmony somewhere that makes it different from the night before. And in that ethos, it's the same as a jazz musician. You know, we'll play a standard, but 
they're looking to do something different. Mm-hmm. And that keeps the song alive. It keeps me committed. Songs aren't museum artifacts. They're living, breathing organisms. Mm-hmm. And you have to breathe life into them every night. That's my job. Is there a... Can you push them too far? Like, Of course you can. Like, I guess it, to, there's a certain... So you don't want to change the melody too much where people can't sing along if it's one of the big hits or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I'll change the melody a lot, but I mean, it's it's based in the key center that I'm <laughs> starting out. And I think the audience, you know, are tuned to that kind of sophistication, if you like. You yeah. know? They're not there to hear a record reproduced. I hope not. Anyway. I don't like it. No, me neither. I know there are bands that do that, mm. and I, sometimes I just don't get it. But there are people also that, there. I think there are some people that want that. It's just not me. You know, when you record a song, you hardly know it. It's yeah. like kind of like a right. first date. You know, after you've been playing it for a while, you, you get more uh, adept at playing it, and you find you find new things. Yeah. So this is not a first date. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed you've been going deep on the set list, which is uh, I think all the big fans have noticed. Um, I was looking around and looking at some of the requests, and one popped out to me because uh, someone asking for history will teach us nothing, and I thought, oh, that's a really good moment right there. Like, how often do you look at your deep back catalog and go? Oh, that's a song that definitely speaks to a new moment. Or how much thought even goes into it when you're choosing those, I guess. Um, you, you know, I, I call Dominic the archivist because Dominic remembers songs that I've long forgotten. <laughs> he remembers the chords and how they go. So he will reteach me my own songs. And uh, it so- soundtracks are interesting. I said, what, what do you got today? And he'll bring something up and I sort of vaguely remember it and try and figure it out. But uh, soundtracks are where we explore mm. older songs. I don't think I've done History Will Teach Us Nothing. I don't think you have either. Because I don't actually believe it. History teaches us a lot. It's, a, it's just a polemic statement I made to invite uh, conversation. Yeah, I understand. I, th- I think most people would understand. Yeah. Um, I know i got to wrap it up. <laughs> Dr. Dre? Yes. You on the new I, record? I know him. Yeah, because he said you're on the record. I don't know. Well, if he, he says I'm to. on the record, that must be the truth. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I think that's. Uh, I want to know. I want to know what this sounds like. <laughs> it sounds pretty good, actually. All right. If it's true. If it's true. Yeah. You think it sounds really good if it's true? I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't blame me. You can just blame him. Uh, it is such a pleasure to get to talk to you. Um, I love the new song. Thank I'm you, hoping Kyle. this is leading to a new album. I think it usually is. So, well, uh, right. See you soon. Thank Sir. you. Bye bye.